Hey folks, this is Jason Lewis, the producer of the From the Shadows podcast. I just want to remind you about our website, fromtheshadowspodcast.com. We have a Facebook page. We would appreciate it if you like and follow. Also, join our discussion group on Facebook called After the Shadows. We have a Twitter feed. Please follow us on Twitter. It can be found at podcast underscore from. Follow us on Instagram at From the Shadows Podcast. We have a YouTube channel. Go to the search bar of YouTube and put From the Shadows Podcast and please subscribe to that channel. We are also on the Odyssey Radio Network and we can be found there at odyssey1.com. We are still on the traditional podcatchers that everybody loves to listen to us on. We get a lot of feedback, so please rate the podcast and communicate with uh, whether you're on Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Google Podcasts. We're there, and we appreciate it when you leave comments for us. We also have a Patreon page. It can be found at www patreon.com forward slash from the shadows you can receive books stickers coffee mugs and special content just for our patreon subscribers check it out for yourself and see what packages that we have to offer well that's all i have for you right now folks and thanks for being a part of the from the shadows podcast family so with that being said let's get this episode started so, Howler, okay, you, 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 I'm looking at our show notes, like, you know, because we kind of talk, throw out there what we, you know, some subjects we want to talk about. Right. And you you got me up early on a Sunday morning to talk about dogs. I mean, yeah. seriously. You, you know, know, with my vocation, the last thing I want to talk about is dogs. You know, the only person, people that I know that hate dogs more than the post letter carriers are rural deputies you know and <laughs> excuse me when i when i started in law enforcement uh you know 30 years ago a lot of the rural counties didn't have an animal control so they would it would go to local law enforcement to take care of the the, the dogs and you know people move outside the city for two things uh guns and dogs and you get a lot of calls for both you know people <laughs> People shooting guns, people move to the country and go, oh, my God, they're shooting guns out here. And you got to go out there and say, yeah, it's okay. And then dogs, they call and say, these, you know, the neighbor's dogs are over here. You know, the neighbor's dogs are running or whatever the case may be. And you try to explain to them is, you know, there's no ordinances against that, you know, at that particular time. That's that's what dogs do, run around. like That's yeah. that. Hey, that's right. And, <laughs> and, and you wouldn't, you know, did you guys see the, the, it was in the news uh, this week a little bit. The dog that was stealing the Amazon packages. No, but he's but he is my hero now. Now I'm starting to like this dog. <laughs> starting to like this dog a little it bit. It was yeah. It was the news article, and, and I'll send it to you later. It was it was people were trying to figure out what happened to their smaller packages who were coming up, and then they recorded this dog. It looked like a uh, like a golden retriever, and they had it on the ring doorbell grabbing an Amazon package and, and walking away with it. And of course, me being me, I instantly thought, man, somebody trained that dog to do that. Yeah, that's you know great. Because I mean? you great. could send it with hand signals. You know, I got a couple duck dogs. You could send them with hand signals, get them to snatch a package and bring it down the street, and then you're not on there when you're stealing it. it, it you know? It's brilliant. It's brilliant. I, you know, I don't know. But, but, um, uh, but that made me think about police dogs. You guys ever work with any police dogs? You, Jason, did you ever have any dogs? Do y'all have any hounds or anything over where you worked? Uh, drug dogs would come in once a month. I okay. worked around a couple of them. They were, they were both German shepherds, though. So. Okay, yeah. Well, you know, I was talking to my cousin who who's kind of still in the job, but she's a, a probation officer, and uh, she works at the prison where I kind of where I grew up. And they still have bloodhounds. I asked her last weekend. They still got the bloodhounds. She goes, "Oh yeah, they still." Um, and uh, when we used to have man hunts, you know, there's German shepherds, and now you know a lot of police departments are getting these Belgian Malinois, which is like a, a smaller one. But when I started, it was 100% German shepherds, big, mean, 
nasty. They were a bite dog, what we call bite dogs, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what kind of reputation they had. I went to, um, you guys probably don't know, it. I went to Lincoln University, which is a, um, in Jefferson City, Missouri, which was a, is a historically black college and university, the, the oldest one west of the Mississippi, actually. And But it's in the capital city of Missouri, and there was an old, and I was a criminal justice major, so but I knew people around in the job before I had the job, you know. And there was an old man that served papers. He was an, he was an old retired lieutenant colonel from the from the army, and he served just subpoenas, right? Mm-hmm. And when he wasn't smoking and drinking coffee, that's what he did. He carried <laughs> and and what well, he's a chain smoker. And anyhow, and and the old sheriff always give the the paper servers the oldest cars because if they broke down serving papers, it was no foul, right? Sounds right. Sounds yeah, you know what I mean. Right. Yeah, like they don't. They don't want. They don't want uh, somebody going to an emergency call to break down. But if you're just serving subpoenas, you can't get your subpoena served that day because your car broke down. It's no big deal. But he had the old canine car, and he would park over there. You'd have to see where he'd park between the buildings when he'd serve papers. And why he served a lot of papers in college, I don't know. But he seemed to always be over there, and and people would jump and cross the street when they read caution police dog on that car. They were that scared of police dogs. That's the reputation police dogs had back then, you know, it j- and that there's no dog in the car and they, they'd be like, he's in there now. Oh, I think he's in there. No, he's not. Oh, bullshit, man. He's in there. And, um, which, uh, led to, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever seen anybody that's really had, this is back in the early nineties when crack was going on and you, Sometimes I was on call where we had a we it was uh it was a by bus deal where these undercover guys and I really wasn't into the drug enforcement like some dudes were. I just you know, maybe it's because I grew up watching Miami Vice. I just wasn't into it that much. But we had a, a misguided dude selling crack and he took off and uh a foot chase ensued and then they car rolled up and let the dog out and you know they hollered as police dogs coming or give up or we're gonna send them the dog all the stuff and this dude could outrun all the cops but he could not outrun the dog <laughs> and he what he was trying to do is he was trying to stuff this crack down the front of his pants in his underwear which i don't oh. understand what that would have done you know and oh. uh, <laughs> This just sounds like uh, it sounds I'm like a bad you, idea. This this dog tore him. I've seen people that were gunshot that didn't bleed as much as this dude. Because what that <laughs> dog was trying to do is get his get his get his arm. You know what I mean? Get get an arm is what he was trying to do. And uh, I, this dude just would not. It was like he was holding his his. This dog got a hold of his right arm, upper arm. And he, it was almost like he was holding, he was either stuck in his pants or he was holding it with his left arm and he wouldn't, this dog would, didn't want that arm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, unless you've ever been, you know, I'm a pretty good sized guy. So we used to practice a uh, dude, dude I worked with a lot. It was a dog handler and, uh, a lot of cops didn't like him because he's an asshole, but, um, <laughs> I would, <laughs> I kind of grew up with him. So, so I would wear that bite suit, you know, where they put that big foam thing. You mm-hmm. guys ever seen that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've yeah. Seen and I'm before. telling you what, when that dog gets a hold of you, he owns you. you even in the, even in the care. suit, even in the even big in that suit? suit, you can't, I, it's hard for me to describe. You can't, you know, 80, 90 pound dog like that or hundred pound. I don't know how big, you know, it's it, when they get your arm, you know, they can just jerk you. They just jerk you right down to the ground. Now, obviously, you know, if I was fighting to the death or something, I could probably take the dog with my good arm. You know what I mean? I could do something. But but uh, <clears throat> we used to, when I first started in the jail, I was I told you guys jail stories, how dudes come in there and eat and get coffee in the middle of the night and stuff like that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, in those days, jail, you could bring, they still smoked in the jail. And people could bring stuff items you know there were certain things uh it was called a commissary list so you could they could bring uh uh a limited i you could bring cigarettes up to people in jail 
You could bring, uh, you know, like white T-shirts, underwear, socks. And I'm trying to think, beef jerky was on this thing. And there was a few candy items that you could bring in there. And uh, so, you know, if you people were in jail and, you know, their mom would come up there, their girlfriend or sister or whatever, and bring a, a brown paper bag. That's what it had to be in a brown paper bag. It'd bring a brown paper bag with, like, a bag of those mini Snickers or, you know, uh, uh, three packs of cigarettes or, or, or whatever. And you'd, you, and they'd say, put this on Shane, you know, Shane up in tank three or whatever. And you, you I was going to say, I mean, I mean, I'm all about the Snickers. I don't know about the cigarettes, you know, I mean, jail doesn't hey, sound so bad. There was one night, me, and another guy, and I'd, I'd love to say his name, but I can't cause he's, he's a, on the job. He's a captain. Me and him was working. He was my intern. And uh, we had people, people were bringing this, this stuff in, commissary stuff in, like on a Friday night to bring it up, uh, you know, bring, put the, give this to so-and-so, give this to so and And I had it all sitting all, over on the side on this pipe, these pipe benches, steel benches. And, uh, but the police department kept bringing people in left and right. And I never could bring them upstairs to the inmates because I had so many people to book into jail. You know what I mean? There's just two of us. It's not like nowadays these jails are big. You know, even the one I worked in 30 years ago, now they built a new jail. It's about the size of a city block and it's all automated. And there's about nine people working there, which is another thing I didn't understand how you built an automated jail and need five times more staff you had than you had at the old jail. But <clears throat> I don't understand bureaucracy. Anyway, <laughs> That's a whole other podcast. Yeah. I think it's a whole other episode. Yeah. In the middle of all this debacle, this canine guy comes in. And why he wanted to go through the jail is beyond me. But he was a he was kind of he was this kind of guy. I told you all ago, people are an asshole. And he always wanted to bring that dog because it scared people. You yeah, gave him gave him and, some power, right? Gave that's, him some power. Exactly what it was. You know, I wanted to add a little more to the conversation, but I'm not because it 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 would be misconstrued nowadays as racism and and per, police brutality. It was a standing standard operating procedure. And any, but he walks in. He's got this big black German Shepherd to heal. Doesn't even have it on a leash. Tells it to heal. Walks in. To the back to the dude to the kitchen to get a cup of coffee or whatever, and then Shepherd makes it about two thirds of the way, and then it wants it, it keeps wanting to turn around, and he's and people have been around dogs that you know they knew what they know when they're doing something wrong, so his little head is going toward the dude walking to the kitchen and back to us, and he goes two or three times, he turns around, slinks around, and he beelines straight for one of those brown paper sacks that are sitting there. Oh sticks, boy! Yes, yeah, sticks his big old head in there and comes out with just. <clears throat> now some of these inmates that's got money resources, they send their babies' mamas out and they like the Sam's and bring all this stuff back, right? Yeah. So it'll say beef jerky and and this dog had all uh, as many pieces of Slim Jims and Jack Links <laughs> as you can put in his mouth at one time. <laughs> It looked like it looked like a stack of mini cordwood. He had it on the Lincoln, <laughs> oh, and I had yeah. to jump up and I went over there to try to get all this. And if you ever take try to take a bunch of stuff out of a dog's <laughs> mouth, it doesn't work that good. So finally, the handler coming me back out there. What's going on? I said this effing dog ears <laughs> tells him to drop it. So now I got <laughs> there. There, 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 these these inmates and stuff's been slobbered on by this big old black German shepherd, you know. And of course, at that time, and I don't know, I guess I thought some of the day that they had their their attack dog was I think Swedish or Finnish, but this one had you had German, you know, plots and outs. You all the commands were in German, so he beckons the Deutsches with this thing to give him get all our beef jerky back. But it's been it's been tooth handled by this. German Shepherd. <laughs> so like, what are we going to do? And I said, we're just going to put it back in the bag and give it to him. He's like, are you serious? I said, well, you know, the dog can't get in trouble. You don't write the dog up. Tell the dog go down to Gerbs at the store. Tell the dog go down to Gerbs and buy some more stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> it's nighttime. So 
<laughs> hey, I walked through that thing and delivered it all up. Anyway, when I we just had to do these jail checks at least once an hour, once every fifty nine minutes, you had to walk through. But there was little, little timers before you had to touch it, log your thing through the jail. I went up there an hour or two later, and there was probably seven dudes up in tank three sitting there watching this ten inch black and white TV. And it was uh, it was like this is no cable. So we had three ABC, CBS, NBC, and then there was a local Christian channel that played all these like uh, you know bonanza reruns and crap like that. And I go by there and there's seven, six, seven dudes with a ten inch black and white playing bonanza. I'm talking about old Hoss and, and whatever. And every one of them had one of them Slim Jim beat jerky. They didn't miss a beat, man. Didn't think nothing of it. <laughs> Eating that old dog slobber bee churn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, look, I guess uh, beggars can't be juicy, right? You gotta, uh, got it. I said you gotta have whatever the beef jerky uh, has on it, you know, whatever which, ingredients. Well, I, you know, and I don't know, you know, who knows? Maybe they thought their own dog did it, or I, you know, I, you know, times are tough, you know, and, and when this world flips upside down, and I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen, right? All civilizations collapse at some point. And when this thing collapses, some of those inmates are going to be better served for survival than the best educated people I've been around. And that's about the nicest way I can say it. You know, hey, anybody, anybody that can eat beef jerky slobbered on by a German shepherd. Oh, and they roll their own cigarettes, up. which is a whole different story, too, because back then they would they would roll cigarettes. Uh, so you would they'd bring, like, Prince Albert in a can and a bunch of papers, you know what I mean? Because he, a lot of these people have no money, so they can they could, they could manufacture so many more cigarettes by themselves, you know what I mean? And then what happened is, I was working that day when all the... I don't remember if it was a state law. The rules changed where they come out one day and it, they didn't make all the buildings non-smoking right off the bat. You know, everything's no smoking now, but back then they didn't. And uh, they came out with a thing that said all the county buildings starting next week are going to be 75% smoke free or, or it was a large, just a very large percentage. Everything had to be smoke free by like, the first of the next week or whatever, first of the month. And they were in an absolute panic. And I was in there and I, my sheriff, and this is back when the Democrats ran everything. My sheriff was an old school Democrat and, and the judge, I was walking with him and the jet, judges were Democrats. And then, you know, God dang it, John, what, that John was his name. What are we going to do now? Cause every, they were all smokers, right? Everybody over 45 at that time was smokers. 40, whatever it was, you know, everybody, every adult was a smoker. It seemed like at a period of time, especially the cops and the firemen. So the sheriff goes, I'll take care of it. Like I always do. And he went down there and he, I remember him. He had the plans to the, cause they, they, they've been wanting to build a new facility for years so he had the old plans to the courthouse and the jail and the courthouse the jail was attached to the courthouse you know in an old school way and he sat there and got a piece of paper and he did stood some calculations and he sat down and got out a typewriter his ibm selectric typewriter with his letterhead and and spun it through and he was a he was a piano player of all things like a church piano player he was an excellent piano player and that translated him being an excellent typer and he sat there and typed this whole thing up, and he pulled it out and handed it to me, and he said, we're going to bring that upstairs. And uh, what it said was the courthouse complex was, and I'm making up numbers because I don't remember, 100,000 square feet. 78,221 of it is the four-story jail. You know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. We're going to make the jail non-smoking. Okay. So, Mm-hmm. So the judge and the prosecutors and the sheriff, all those people got to smoke, and I had to go back down there and tell the jail, starting next Monday, we got to go through all those, we got to search, toss all those cells, and take all the cigarettes, all the papers, everything away from them. <laughs> <laughs> that's that fantastic. Terrible, isn't it? Yeah, that's, hey, what'd you say about bureaucracy? That, hey, that's how it works. <laughs> and, and, and people, hey. Democrats that can type seem to know how to navigate it better than anybody I've ever been with. You know? Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, uh, 
Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. Ha 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 ha.